in the foothills of the high Himalayan mountains in the state of Sikkim in India, a village morning starts with a kitchen and the fireplace. My adopted sister, Anom, is preparing traditional food for me. The thin bread she is rolling is made from crops that have been cultivated in the area for centuries. These crops are much less eaten these days, but she kindly made it for me because this is what I'm looking at. I am an artist and a scholar. I integrate photography and drawings for my research. I do this to revitalize diversity of agricultural crops that are being lost. All the photos and drawings are the ones that I created in the field. My journey in the Sikkim Himalayas started in 2011, and I lived in the village for one year. I wanted to learn how people have lived with the natural environment for hundreds of years, and what is the key to being sustainable. I became a village girl, wearing local clothes, eating local food, and collecting fodder for cows. Yes, it was heavy. <laughs> but I wanted to see the world through their perspectives. And I realized I was becoming more aware of who I am as a human being. Talking to the lecture elders in local languages, soon I found out that varieties of indigenous crops that they used to cultivate have been replaced by just one cash crop. The monocultural cash crop cardamom spread in the field around 1950s. However, the monocultural cardamom collapsed due to disease in early 2000s. Because the people were dependent on the monocultural cash crop, the village economy was devastated. This issue is happening all around the world. Four years later, I got an opportunity to stay in a remote village in Majiwa, Zimbabwe, southern part of Africa. There, the maize monoculture has been affected by intensified drought. What survived in the drought were the indigenous crops, varieties of millets and sorghum, and these traditional crops have different uniqueness and strength. One variety stores well, one provides good nutrition, and one can tolerate drought. So even if one fails, we have other crops to survive. Dependence on monocultural cash crops provide better production for a short term, but are susceptible to the impacts of climate change and disease in the long term. Having diversity is a strategy that had helped us to survive for centuries. For my PhD, I am working with the two indigenous communities in the Sikkim Himalayas and in Zimbabwe to revitalize their indigenous crops. Using art helps to capture the living knowledge and to create a process with the communities. Art and science should not be separate. In the Sikkim Himalayas, I documented 36 indigenous crops using my photographs, drawings, local names, scientific names, use of the plants, and cultivation practices. In Majiwa, Zimbabwe, local people already saw that indigenous crops were thriving in the extreme drought. To help initiate a revitalization process, they asked me to conduct a drawing workshop to teach them how to draw and to reflect on their valuable plants and landscapes. When I draw, it gives me a chance to look at the details of plants and to learn and interact as a life. Using art is therefore useful to understand how people perceive and understand the life of the plants. The aim of my research in maintaining diversity of indigenous crops is to understand the structure and processes that can ensure the survival of traditional biodiversity. 
Working with these two communities, I will isolate common principles from each location and develop a model. This model will improve local resource self-sufficiency that could be applied to anywhere in the world with similar issues associated with monocultural agriculture. While conducting academic research, I believe it is also important to share the issues and ideas with broader audience. I shared my research through entering into the Nikon Salon Photography Competition. I had exhibitions in Tokyo and in Osaka entitled Learning from Rome, Learning from the Lecture Peoples, where I received the Miki Jun Inspiration Award. I'm grateful for the warmth and hospitality of the communities in Sikkim and Majiwa. I also appreciate the local NGOs I work with, Atri in Sikkim and the Moon Trust in Majiwa. And thanks so much to the Public Scholar Initiative and the Rotary International for supporting my work. This research is my academic journey, but more so my personal journey meeting with these people in the Himalayas and in Zimbabwe, and to work with them for a shared goal. My doctoral research builds on my long time studies in Sikkim and in Zimbabwe. I'm looking at small scales, but this is to contribute to the global body of knowledge on biocultural diversity that is critical for our survival in the time of uncertainty. Thank you so much.